Well, I hope you appreciate me taking time away from my uh, enjoyment of paradise in order to tell you guys about DTDs and schemas. So let's talk a little bit about these things. So you know what a schema is. A schema is the set of rules that guides an instance. It's a set of rules that determines what the instance is about. It's sort of the definition of the model of the, of the instance in XML. And for us, our models are all about information types. So we're modeling kinds of information and we're also modeling the organization of information. So that's what a schema is. But as you travel around the XML landscape, you're likely to hear this term X, uh, DTDs, especially from people who have been in the field for a while. And the thing you need to know most about a DTD is that it's um, the old form. It's kind of the old school way of doing, uh, of doing the rules files. So a DTD, a document type definition, is exactly like a schema in the sense that it's the rules file. It's the file that determines what the rules are that an instance has to follow in order to be valid. Right? So we have this concept of well-formed, we have the concept of valid. Valid can be performed by a schema, valid could also be performed by a DTD. And in older implementations, especially not XML implementations, but SGML implementations, which we've talked about previously, in SGML imp implementations, DTDs are the way that um, the rules are specified. So first thing to know is that they're the old school. Second thing to know is that they're, they're different in another very interesting way, and to me, much more interesting than that one's old and the other one's new. And that's that in the old world of, of, of DTDs, the DTD was written in a language separate from the language that it described. So DTD language was language A. It described the rules for language B, which is this, the, the syntax of XML that you know. It, was, it would be almost like um, having a dictionary of the rules of English in Latin, let's say, because Latin is a language above English, and Latin can be used to define the English vocabulary. That's the old way of doing it. But what happened in the, with the invention of schemas is that schemas came along and um, the designers of schemas said, well, why don't we just use XML to make the rules to, to guide XML? And that's in fact exactly how, how schemas work. Schemas are XML files that just contain a kind of XML that defines the rules for another kind of XML. So that may sound really complicated and, and arcane, but the idea really is just exactly like we do in English. We don't have our English dictionaries in French, we have our English dictionaries in English. So we define our English words, we define our, what's, what's a valid English word by also using English, right? Which, if you think about it, that itself is pretty strange, but we do it all the time. We define one word in terms of other, term, uh, other words, and we stay within this world of one language to speak the language and also define the language that we're speaking. So that's how schemas work as well. They are valid XML files, and if you ever look behind the scenes, we won't. We'll always look at a sort of a graphical version of the file where you see nice kind of flowchart view or tree view of the XML. But in fact, if you look behind the scenes in Oxygen and choose the little tab that says text, you'll see that um, a schema really is just another XML file. It's a strange looking XML file with a lot of tags that you don't understand, but it's nonetheless an XML file. And, I'll, and as I've said or will say, depending on how you consume these topics in the, in the um, topic on, on uh, namespaces, uh, the, the only big difference between a schema file and a file that we'll create in this class is that it uses a different namespace. Its tags come from a different schema. In fact, it's the schema of schemas, the schema that defines schemas. And of course, I hope some of you at least at this point are asking, well, if there's a schema that defines schemas, what defines the schema of schemas? Nothing, right? We don't, go, we don't go the schema of schemas, the schemas, the schemas, the schemas, although we certainly could. In fact, they just stop at the schema of schemas. And really, there's just an agreement, a handshake among all the people, for example, Oxygen and all the other XML editing tools that will use this set of tags for our DTDs and our schemas. Okay, so because schemas are XML, you can open them and you can edit them and, um, and do all that kind of stuff with them. What else do I need to tell you? Um, so the old ones, as I said, used an arcane and a very compressed syntax that was hard to learn. The new ones um, uh, use XML only, and we're going to look at them in, um, only in graphical terms. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. One other thing. Um, DTDs were really from the age when XML was only used for content. Our, our use of XML is content. And so for us, DTDs, DTDs and schemas will be almost exactly the same. But when schemas were invented, it was when XML turned not from, not to be a way of defining content, but for a way of, uh, into a way of defining data and transferring data from one data system to another. And that's in fact the major use of XML, as I've said elsewhere, is transferring data from one system to another. And schemas were designed to be able to do that. 
Now, the thing, that's, the thing that's necessary when you're moving information or moving data from one, say, database to another is to know the data types. And so you're not responsible for that, type, for, that, for that vocabulary, the vocabulary of data types, but you may understand it. For example, we have integers, we have dates, we have all these different types of data, some of which we'll use in our schemas, most of which we won't use. But when you're transferring data from one data system to another, it's very important that you know what these different data types are, and there's all sorts of them, and schemas support, schemas define, schemas describe all those different types of data, whereas um, uh, DTDs in the past didn't. So in summary, DTD is just the old school way of doing what schemas do. Um, schemas extend the functionality of, of DTDs so that you can do things like transfer data from one data system to another. And the other important difference is that, that DTDs are written, excuse me, schemas are written in the same language that they define, the XML language, while DTDs were written in a separate, uh, pri a separate other language that described the rules of, a, of an XML, or in, usually in the case of a DTD, in the, of the SGML file that they described.